One of my favorite parts of the documentary, though, is when we learned that Justin actually called you for the first time when you were in the shower. He got out of the shower, halfway in the shower, halfway out of the shower. And he answered the phone, and I was like, what's up, dog? Like, you can call me when you're done showering. <laughs> what's going through your head when you saw your phone ringing? Um, well, I knew he was gonna call me at some point because he had asked me his no uh, for my number on Instagram. Which is crazy. Yeah, and I <laughs> sent it to him, so I was kind of waiting, and I was just, I think I had just finished playing basketball or something, and I was like, I'm gonna hop in the shower, and I heard the ring, and I knew it. I was like, oh, f knew it. And so, um, I was really excited. <laughs> and I just got out of the shower, and I was yeah. like... Right, of course. I mean, yeah, I was, I was... Geeked, yeah, I was excited. <laughs> How would you say Justin has inspired you to be maybe more vulnerable in your life and in your music? I mean, just being around him and who he is as a person is really inspiring. He's been he's been through so much and he's like mm. had so much learning experience. He's just a really special person. He has a really cool perspective on like life and he's always been very like honest and vulnerable with me and he always mm. I guess encourages that around anybody that he's with which is like really inspiring it's it inspired me to do that with like my own family and friends yeah. and stuff has it also maybe inspired the boundaries you were talking about earlier right like kind of separating you know your personal life yeah from totally music. he always tells me to rest yeah. yeah he's just always like get rest <laughs> he's like rest is the most important I bet a lot of people tell you that <laughs> Yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. Another pal of yours is Post Malone, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that you're so ambitious and he knew you were going to be huge. How has your guys' friendship kind of like, I don't know, guided you through life, not just the career part? Um, I think, well, it's a similar thing. He's a very like, very sweet guy and when you when you're around infectious energy like that around people who are like yeah so honest and nice and welcoming yeah. it just like it is really like it does like change your whole get up in the way that you like you know feel it makes you feel really happy it makes you want to pass it on just being around his energy makes me want to be better you know it, well you guys are close enough that you each gave each other a tattoo right and he was just like all right i'm gonna draw a stick figure and now he's gonna have clogs i can't believe that you got any other secret tattoos with uh your famous friends that we should know about no <laughs> <laughs> just I don't, posting, I don't huh? think so oh okay yeah, i, I feel like so. if post Malone told me he wants to get a tattoo with me i'd be like yes let's do it 100 <laughs> percent. you can't can't say no i love it yeah. i mean between justin post and honestly even tate what's it like to have people in your life um and friends who understand the world that you come from and the one that, and the one that you're living in together at the same time yeah it's cool because um it's cool because the like it is a very a specific feeling or thing that you go through. It's like not many people would know unless you're just doing it. So it's cool to be able to have people who are able to go through that and also just be super cool and welcoming again. And just having support. Having support, perfect. right? That's the perfect word, support. Yeah, they just back 100%. you up whenever you need it. Yeah, so that's really cool. I need you and Tate to do a song. <laughs> have you guys discussed that at all about collaborating? No, not really. I mean, maybe. Who knows? One day. Who knows? I just, I can hear it already. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but I can hear it. I already know fans want it. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I make so many songs and then I hate them all. And then it'll take me like months to figure out which ones I really like. I think I just want to be able to give the most honest version of myself. That's really it. Congratulations See, on this documentary, man. I'm like, I'm curious though, because obviously uh, you have this one-to-one -one, like direct relationship with your fans, especially on social media and also of course your music, but why the documentary? Like why was this like the thing you wanted to do and share with the world? That's a great question because I actually don't really, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think more so it was like, me and uh, Michael, the director, we met, um, I think probably I want to say when I was 16. So it's kind of like a recap of like the past four years. And I think I think the thing that I've like, um, I'm very like awkward. I'm, I'm not good with interviews. I get really anxious and stuff. So like this is maybe a good cool thing. I bet it's also scary, right? It's a vulnerable it's so, thing. It's one of the most like, yeah, I'm so anxious about it. Cause it is like the last like three or four years of my, life a little bit you know compiled into like a montage almost yeah, you know? and then it's sure. like you're sharing pieces of things that are like a little personal or like 
things that like, you know, vulnerable moments. And but stuff. it's nice to have this, right? So then you can have it as like a source of pride too, about yeah. like how you got here. It's just cool to look back at everything. Totally. Like, also, I feel like it's also an opportunity for you to recognize like the sacrifices that you made, that your family made. I mean, you were a young kid with a dream in Australia, right? And your whole entire family moved to support your dream. Um, and then three years later, I mean, you were like the biggest thing coming out of Australia. So do you ever imagine that would happen so quickly, that kind of like rise to fame? No, I just, I don't know. I like, I've just wanted to make, make music, music ever since I was a little kid. And like, I always knew that I wanted to do that for the rest of my life. I just, I never really thought that hardly about like quickness or whatever. The beginning of the documentary, you say, I want to be the biggest artist in the world. But then at the end, uh, you say, no, you, you no longer want that. What's your hope for the future? Making the best music possible. That's where I'm directing my hunger and that's where I'm directing my desires. I think I realized going through this whole process, which you'll see, you know, that's what a lot of the documentary is about, is like dealing with stuff coming quickly um, at like, you know, whatever, when you're like growing up in a sense, you know, that's kind of what it's about is like realizing at the end of it, what, you know, it sounds cliche, but what really what's matters, important. you know, what's Absolutely. really important, you know, you're like, oh, okay, like, all I want to do is make good music, have good people around me, and yeah. Growing up, I watched my favorite rappers in the views. I ain't believe them when they said it ain't all what it seems. Do you feel like you have that and that you've achieved that right now in your career? I do. That's yeah. awesome. That's so awesome. You said that um, as much as people will learn about you from this doc, that they will learn even more by listening to your music. So I'm curious, like, how do you channel your story and your life experiences in your music in a way that you don't do in your day-to-day -day life? It's interesting. Music's really cool because it's like you can kind of choose, like, yeah, like how you want to say something or how you, like this. I've definitely made like songs that are obviously like, you like autobiographical. From, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like you, I've made songs that are like so completely true to myself, and I then, see I've, what you're then I've made songs that like I've pulled inspiration from totally. real life, and then you create the the world around it and stuff like that. What's something surprising fans will learn about you in this documentary? Do you think a lot of stuff in the documentary that you know over the past couple of years? Obviously, I'm not posting everything to right. social media, so maybe there's a lot of things that people didn't know, like. It's going through little like um, things here and there over the past couple of years, just, you know, uh, personal stuff. Is that something that you've kind of evolved, that relationship with social media? Like the, the more, let's say, famous that you get, the more you want to keep to yourself? I like to kind of uh, keep, you know, my life to me a sure. little bit. Just out of like a, it's, you know, it's tough when like, I feel like uh, there was a saying that somebody told me, it was like humans are conditioned to like, take on like 10 people's opinions on <laughs> your life and stuff, yeah. not like a million people, you know, or like 100,000 or whatever. And I bet there's be. a million people in your life in your ear, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Fame makes you feel invincible because you're like, I have access to things that a majority of the world doesn't have access to immediately at the snap of my fingers. So if you think that's not gonna make another man feel invincible, you're crazy. How do you kind of quiet that noise then? Like, is it in the studio? Is it, you know, yeah. making sure you have some quality time with like your real friends? I, I mean, yeah, like just time with friends, hanging out, trying not to think about it too much. I mean, I'm still figuring it out. Of course. I'm definitely not perfect. So I'm it's still- It's probably gonna change again, you know? Like yeah, 100%. Now, it's evolving. It changes every couple months. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, yeah, I like to just hang out with my friends though and make music. You released a new song last month called Heaven, which is pretty emotional, right? Heaven is a place I don't want to go Cause when I see your face I don't want to die no more you're, You put out some songs that are really personal to you. What's that feeling like when it becomes not just yours anymore but everyone else's, you know, especially when you're that raw and vulnerable? Well, it's, yeah, it's easier to do that I think than like, yeah, like putting out a documentary because <laughs> it's like, it can, yeah, like it's like it lives in a different world and a different like realm and it's like a documentary is more like very literal and like right. showing like real clips of yourself and like real stuff whereas like kind music, of take it as fact. yeah, music people can take it on to however they interpret it however they kind of want to so, um, but like, yeah, I, I really love that song because it is, it does, it is a very real, it feels like a very real, um, Song. And it's positive too. It's positive too. I yeah. like I like yeah, I, I I like that about it. I'm trying to 
trying to be more positive. So. Well, that's cool though, because you're right. It is open to interpretation, right? And yeah. so, it, even if it, maybe it comes from like a, a sadder place when you're recording it, but it becomes something else, right? Like all of a sudden, it's a, a source of hope, for example, mm -hmm. or something like with that song. You're turning 20, 21 this August, which is awesome. Have you had a chance to think about how you might want to celebrate that? Um, uh, Vegas. Really? Vegas. <laughs> I asked Olivia Rodrigo this, and she said, I think I'm going to wait on Vegas, but you, you're you ready. You want to do it now. I'm going to Vegas. Yes. yes. I'm going to Vegas, 100%. <laughs> I'm going to Vegas. So <laughs> can I ask you, in Australia, do they realize that, like, that Vegas is that spot that you go to when you're turning 21? Like, I feel like I always... Uh, you knew. Well, I, actually, I, I, just, I, I don't really know. I mean, I knew Vegas was like the spot for, you know... The, to celebrate big. <laughs> to celebrate uh, gambling and stuff yeah. like that, I guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, probably. Because that's where, it's, you know, once you're turning 21, you're able to do all of yeah, that stuff. Yeah, exactly. What do you want people to know about this documentary? I want people to know that the goal of this documentary was to hopefully um, inspire people mm -hmm. and uh, let people know that whatever they might be going through, they're not alone in it and that, you know, like we're in this together. You know, I think that's an important thing. For I think it's important. Going back to like just the thing we talk about this sometimes is like it's important to see like, other people like vulnerable, you know, especially mm. like when we get to have like platforms and stuff like this, you know, want to show people like how normal it is to be vulnerable and open and honest. It's not like the whole like triumphant like come up story, whatever. It's more of a recap on just it's just a thing to show um, who I am a little bit. Feels like so much pressure, and that gets in my head a lot, thinking that maybe one day it could just not happen anymore. You make one wrong move, and the way people look at you can change. Congratulations on this. Like, I know it's very, very vulnerable to open yourself up like that, but you know what? You've been doing it in your music. You might as well, might as well show your fans who you really are, too. Thanks, so, bro. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Absolutely.